what's up folks welcome back to the channel loser here thanks for stopping by so it's a pretty big patch day today we got the wixwell fusion live coming in there's also some other updates some champion rebalances epic empowerment is also in the game right now so make sure you guys check that out as well there's lots of things going on uh, but in this video we're going to be mainly focusing on the wixwell fusion that's live it's going to be a traditional fusion which means you have to collect all the rare pieces and then level up the rare pieces fuse them into the epic pieces level up the epic pieces and then fuse them up into the wixwell fusion keep in mind that you have to do all this within the fusion event timeline you can't hold on to this fusion so you have to summon him before the end of this make sure you guys got that straight um, generally these traditional fusions are a little bit harder to complete because they do require you to spend uh, training uh, resources in leveling up the pieces and then fusing them into the legendary it also costs you silver to do so so make sure you guys have a little bit of extra silver going into the final days where you're going to fuse wixwell also keep in mind that you need potions to do all sending um, i did provide a note here so this is what you need in terms of potions keep in mind that you do need some void potions so make sure you guys are um, readily uh stocking up from your void keeps it is only open once uh per week so make sure you guys are on top of that um yeah so make sure you guys have enough potions that i have listed above all right so let's jump into the calendar here it is available uh in game right now so let's take a look at it we got going on so right now we have the dragon tournament that's live with the dungeon diver that's really nice to see when you start the fusion you have the dungeon diver and the dungeon open um 3700 points for the dungeon divers means that we are looking at about 5.5k uh energy total energy to uh, finish that's going to be on approximately hard 10 difficulty if you're doing uh, uh, normal 20 difficulty you're going to save a little bit of energy probably closer to 5k energy but either way it looks like you're spending the duration of dungeon divers looks like there is a training tournament that starts tomorrow if you have a dragon team that allows you to farm solo food allows you to find food and do some training as well that's going to help you be a more efficient in the area um there is a champion training uh, champion training event paired with the champion chase tomorrow that's actually kind of nice because champion chase you usually want to pull smaller shards personally i was thinking it was going to be a summon rush uh, just because of the way that plarium structures and uh, basically aligns their summon rush and champion chase tournaments previously we had a champion chase followed by hero's path and then this week we had a champion chase which doesn't make a lot of sense because in the past they never counted their hero's path as a summon rush or a champion chase. It was just basically like a skip, like a skip week. This time, however, Plarium did basically count the path, the hero's path that we had last week as the summon rush. And then this week we have another champion chase. We can't be too upset about this because obviously there's a really, really nice event going on right now. Um, or that will or will be active um during that champion chase and it's going to be this 2x ancient so you have boosted rates to pull from ancient shards and you have a 10x wall master Ethereum. so it's actually a really good um event to pull for during a chase so you know that's a little bit of a gift i guess from player i don't know if they're setting up something maybe they have some ideas of like a guarantee maybe they have a guarantee idea here like you never know right with ancients um because this event is really really good like one of the best even if you're not going for the fusion you're probably pulling anyways so anyways just something to keep in mind guys but we're going to be doing training uh pulling mystery shards pulling ancient shards if you want to be super efficient of course uh to complete the champion chase uh gonna be throwing energy into your dragon to complete your dungeon divers so that's basically what's going to happen the first four days and then ice golem opens you can obviously throw some ice golem energy into your first dungeon divers 
it looks like it aligns here. You'll get some time here, some overlap. So obviously, Ice Golem, there is some you know solo uh, teams that or dual teams that can allow you to farm food as well. So then you can do some more double dipping into this training event. Um, also, the Ice Golem will have its own dungeon divers coordinating with it. Um, yeah, again, this is going to be big energy. So 5.5k here. And this is another 5.5k here. These are, you know, obviously over three days. Uh, so you do have some time to accumulate that energy. If you're free to play and you do all your dailies, do all your, um, use all your free passive energy, you get about a thousand energy a day. Uh, this is something to keep in mind. Um, then you have obviously these artifact enhancement events. Looks like three of them, which is pretty standard. We're going about 20 million each. If you don't have 20 million right now, you're going to be doing a lot of farming, and then the farming will hopefully give you guys some silver to work with. Classic arena, pretty standard. Two classic arenas, those are non issues usually. So after the second dungeon divers, it looks like there is some overlap here with the Fire Knight, so you can spend some energy in the Fire Knight for the second dungeon divers. Um, so hopefully they do have some overlap. It's hard to tell sometimes when they are landing on the day um, but that just means you can spread out this 5.5 energy and spend some on the ice golem and spend some on the fire knight um, having the champion training paired with the fire knight's not really the best because there's not too many you know teams that can allow you to train food as well so you'll just be probably grinding this training by itself um, and then obviously finishing off the fire knight um, tournament with the third dungeon diver there um, also you do have a spider overlap as well so the fire knight you probably put uh, 2.7k energy into that and then 2.7k energy into your spider and then you have the dungeon diver done so this dungeon diver the third one lines up quite well because you have the two tournaments um, so you don't need to basically overspend energy on one tournament to finish off the dungeon diver for example uh, this dragon tournament you have to overspend you have to spend all your basically most of basically most or all your energy into dragon to finish off the dungeon diver so that's a little bit of an overspend so you'll see more bloated dragon tournament brackets that you're in you'll see people with higher totals you'll earn the win for example so that accounts for all the rares that are available. It looks like there is no extra rares, guys. So there's no mistakes if you're just going for the rares. You cannot miss anything from any of these events. So no mistakes, guys. You can't really recover. But there is a option to get the epic from the summon rush here. So as part of the summon rush uh, in the second half of this fusion, you do have the option to get the epic. Uh, in the past the summon rush usually is um about six sacreds to get the rare piece and then the epic piece usually is at least eight sacreds worth of points at least four thousand points in some cases closer to five thousand points so about ten sacreds so it's definitely not a cheap uh way to get the epic um if you do go for the epic that means you get to skip four events it it really depends on your account what you want to do there might also be a really juicy event that plarium places on us on this summon rush in the back half of the fusion that maybe you don't mind pulling shards for and in that case then you're going to have an extra epic and in that case you can skip four events however since this summon rush is near the back end of this fusion and we won't know exactly what event will correspond with the summon rush we don't know exactly what the total cost of this epic will be you won't have all the information you need to make an educated choice and in the end you don't have much choice in terms of which event you want to skip so what you're looking at here is probably skipping a dungeon diver spider tournament maybe you get to skip the training tournament maybe you get to skip the artifact enhancement it's not really yeah you don't have much choice you don't have much choice there so just something to keep in mind um 
I think what's going to happen is that most people are going to go for this chase because it's good value. You get 2x ancients, do the chase, get your food, build them up. Um, if you have, for example, if you were able to get four of the rares uh, during a champion chase, which you should be able to, you can fuse them into the epics right away to get additional points. So that's a good thing. Obviously, having the chase up front is not as good as having the chase in the back. Uh, because you can save more epics and use them during the chase in the back half of the fusion. Um, the other thing that will be interesting to see is that in the past, previous uh, traditional fusions, they have been bumping up the champion chase tournament requirements, uh, probably to compensate for people saving their epics for the champion chases. Uh, but I did notice that the uh, chase total amounts have been going up for these type of events whether it be hybrid or traditional where you can save and fuse epics along the way. Also, guys, keep in mind that these are rare pieces, or sorry, rare void pieces, which might cause them to have higher values as well. From the first events that we see, the Dragon and the Dungeon Diver, the totals seem fine. They don't seem uh, elevated at all. So maybe we won't see any kind of pieces for the rare void pieces but in the past we have seen void pieces be a little bit more expensive uh, than their non-void counterparts keep in mind also cvc will be during the end of the fusion likely to be personal reward cvc um, doesn't look to be too much benefit here you could summon wixwell during the personal reward cvc so make sure you guys save him um for this personal reward cbc so that looks like a nice you know easy 30k points here if you guys are completing wixwell so as i'm going over this fusion plan with you guys it seems pretty straightforward uh as far as fusions go there's no um surprise hero's path or any kind of weird event that's jammed into the schedule looks like everything lines up for the most part relatively well you can see here like i said in the second half of the fusion we have the fire knight and spider tournament both lining up with one dungeon diver which is perfect um and yeah i mean we have a great event going on for the chase so i expect most people who are going for the fusion to do the chase um, you can't really skip any events so you will be slowly slogging along um the other good thing about having a chase up front is that if you're pulling mystery shards and ancient shards you have um you have uh, lots of food ready for the turn for the training events of course um if you're planning to pull void shards you do have a chance to pull the rare here as well so keep that in mind as well if you're using uh, those void shards for a champion chase obviously not super advised but you might need to some key things to remember here for the uh, free to plays, of course, or whoever is strapped for resources. Remember that you have a clan shop. You have 1,000 energy here. Make sure you guys use that in four days to grab extra energy so you guys can do events. Also, you guys are grabbing your energy here to make sure you guys can do something well. All right, guys, so that's going to be it for the video and for my schedule breakdown for the Wixwell Fusion. Honestly, my final thoughts on this, I feel like the schedule looks pretty straightforward. Um, there's obviously going to be, you know, hard requirements for a lot of these events. It's going to be difficult for early accounts to complete. Um, we, at this point, know and expect what Plarium can throw at us for these events. So far with the Dragon event and the Dungeon Diver event, being available to us it doesn't look like the values are too outrageous or too I guess uniquely different so we can kind of expect the same uh, moving forward for their other dungeon and diver uh, events after that we don't know the values of their champion chase and we don't know the value of summon rush which is always the biggest question marks how many shards it will take us to complete um so that is always a mystery until the events are open. Keep in mind that otherwise the event looks pretty straightforward. 
Um, and, you know, as my final thoughts for the Fusion, whether Wixwell is actually worth going for, uh, I did do a play test on him. I was not impressed with him. I did uh, do some other testing with him just to test out some um, extra things with his uh, basically his intercept ability. So his intercept ability, personally, I feel is just a different version of block debuffs. I feel block debuffs is probably better on average because intercept can only stop crowd control. It does stop keep, which is probably the biggest thing that intercept is probably going to be talked about for. But I think for most players, general players, for this champion general purpose, intercept is just a worse version of block debuffs. I think he does have value in clan boss so definitely i did um, not test him in the video that i made in clan boss but i did try a team with him in clan boss and he did obviously perform fine increased defense and shield a decreased attack obviously very solid the duration buff is also very good for any kind of team setting has a lot of buffs it, keep in mind his shield growth is not going to be uh, not going to be very noticeable uh, I think that's done by done on purpose by Plarium because they don't want to see like their Rogni cadaver team. But his main value is going to come from Hydra. Intercept is not really super good in Hydra, I would say. Um, it's not better than Block Debus for sure. And most likely you won't be using Wixwell in Arena where Intercept uh, probably meant to shine, but... This guy's kit is probably not meant for Arena, to be honest. I don't know. Uh, I mean, for an early player, it's hard to convince me to spend 11 books on this guy to um, basically give me a shield and block. <laughs> basically give me a shield and increase defense. I think it's it's asking a lot. But uh, for maybe mid-game players that are progressing through Hydra, he's a great Hydra provoker. He brings some survivability. Um... His passive is really his passive can work in some situations. I've like I tried him in arena and when he gets hit, his counterattack A1 provokes the enemy, which is you know kind of annoying, right? So he can CC that way, but obviously like having this constant provoke up is like cheap magnet for himself, so he can get beat. Overall, personally, full disclosure, I'm gonna go for this guy just because I have the resources too. Um, and I always advocate to go for fusions if you have the resources and time to do them. So you never know when this intercept might actually be viable. Um, I don't think he's a big candidate to be buffed, to be honest. So that hope, probably not uh, not very... It's going to be a little foolish to hope that he's going to be buffed. But I think his intercept ability is unique. And you never know with these unique champions how well they will do in the future. So... Anyways, that's going to be my final thoughts on the fusion. Let me know what you guys are planning to do. Yeah, let me know what you guys think of the, the schedule, what you guys think about Wixwell. Make sure you guys check out some of the play tests on some of the new champions that I put out from the test server. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Appreciate your time. And I'll see you guys in the next video.